AIM So please take posture for, for your meditation, uh, whatever is the best posture that will support you uh, in this moment today. Let your body tell you what you need. Do you need to sit in a chair? Does it feel good to sit on a cushion or a bench or, or maybe to lie down or standing? Or do you want to do some walking and uh, for a few minutes and then and then um, sit down? <clears throat> so whatever whatever calls you, whatever feels most supportive to entering into mindfulness. So I'd like to invite you to begin with just really checking into the body and the, the quality of energy in the body. As I, as I mentioned, as we gathered, just kind of looking around, observing, welcoming what's present in this body-mind system right now. What's alive? Is there fatigue? Is there energy? Is there uh, restlessness? Is there uh, an eagerness to, to begin? A willingness? So welcoming yourself in your wholeness, in the company of the Sangha. So bringing that awareness that we are together in this virtual way. We are together joined in this moment of sacred time, sacred space. Inviting an altruistic dimension to your intention as we begin the sit. However that appears to you, May I, may I sit to become more present to myself so that I may be also present and fully receive others. May I, may I cultivate kindness for myself and others. May I practice to awaken for the benefit of all beings.
as we feel ourselves resting, supported by Mother Earth. Sustained by the atmosphere that supports life. I invite you to bring attention to your breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. You may notice breathing in a particular place in the body. Noticing the sensation of breathing, what we can feel, what we can connect with most easily is, is actually the sensation of the breath. The sensation of the breath is not the breath itself. Well, we might get curious about what is this breath, not inviting rumination or thinking or but just how is how does the whole body experience the breath? Yes, certainly a sensation. Is there an energizing quality? Is there a movement of the attention? There's the in-breath and there's the out-breath. And there are the pauses between the in and the out and the out and the in-breaths. All of that is part of the breath. Letting the body breathe itself.
So I invite you to explore as you maybe are collecting your attention around the breath <clears throat> to open your focus of attention to the whole body, to a sense of the whole body breathing. It's a bit like changing the focal lens on a camera and rather than just zoning in on a particular place where the sensation of the breath is felt to open out the focus, widen the lens. To include the whole body. If this works for you, nothing is imposed. It's an invitation to explore. And as we feel the whole body breathing, inviting the body to relax, to become more calm, to settle more deeply. Becoming fully present, or more fully present. Gently putting aside preoccupations. Giving ourselves the gift 
of being present to ourselves. As the mind settles, <clears throat> as it, the waves of preoccupations with um, daily activities and responsibilities, perhaps just calm a little bit, maybe not completely, maybe not at all. And so that's okay. It doesn't mean it's bad meditation. <laughs> It's meditation always is what it is, and it's always beginning again. And if there is some um, bit of calming of the mind,
we can bring a, a quality of curiosity and interest to the, the body, the heart, to notice if there are attitudes. Attitude can mean a kind of a posture or a pose of the body, of the mind toward ourselves, first of all. Is there a, an attitude of self-judging or of feeling not enough? Feeling incapable or wrong in any way. And, and if that shows up, if, if in this enhanced capacity of the mind to, to see inward, inwardly, uh, that shows up, some harshness with oneself, then just recognize that as a conditioning of the mind, as not, not me, not mine, as creating suffering. And see if there can be a kind of a inhabiting of the space of knowing around that formation, which gives us a little sense of freedom from it. In the knowing, a knowing which is gentle, which is kind, which is compassionate, which recognize, which recognizes that all formations are conditioned. And we can inhabit the freedom of simply being mindful open allowing we don't need to fix ourselves there's no one to fix and there's no one to do the fixing Mind just can let go, stop gripping, stop holding on.
in the last few minutes of the practice, I'd like to um, lead a, a short guided metta practice. I'll bring the attention to the heart center. And bring to mind, to heart, some being for whom you easily feel a quality of goodwill, of kindness, of care, benevolence, friendship, love, whatever, whichever of those words resonates for you in the heart. Notice what resonates and how it resonates in the heart. Maybe it's, it's more a mental quality of just inclining the mind toward that other with, with goodwill. Bringing the focus, instead of bringing it, instead of uh, inclining it outwards toward an outer object, bringing it inward and resting in that quality, however you experience it, as if it's a, a kind of light, a flame, a lantern, radiating through the body, may be experienced as warmth, as light, maybe as a quality of a kind of certain energetic quality, tenderness, allow that tenderness to be known within the body towards one's own being. And radiating outwards in all directions, beyond the body. To the front, to the back, to the left, to the right, above and below and all directions in between. Creating a field of metta that includes all those on this Zoom call, all those in your dwelling place, all those on the street, in your neighborhood, in the city, or country, or wherever you are, extending boundlessly in all directions, including all beings, human and non-human. Beings of every size, every adaptation to land, to water, to air. every place, every bioregion which supports life, within which life is inextricably intertwined by our breathing, by our taking in water and nourishment, knowing the way our lives intertwine. Knowing the way life is interwoven. In a web. So profound. We cannot possibly know. 
our interconnections. And within that, shining the, that light, allowing that light to shine unimpeded, boundlessly, including all, excluding none. And dedicating our practice to all of this. Our practice, which is also our life, May our practice and our lives serve the happiness, well being, and liberation of all beings and the earth which supports us. Uh, so I'll use I'll use what was just shared as a segue to uh, to talk about um, the teachings that I'd like to open up with you over the next few months, um, and these are the teachings on uh, ethics, and um, they they are expressed in the precepts um, and uh, and teachings on right action and so on. Um, so, so I'll be, I'd like to explore the precepts um, that as we chanted them, but also drawing from other Buddhist traditions um, and how in, in Zen and the Tibetan tradition, uh, they also are expressed um, and explored. I've, um, I've been doing a, a training uh, which is um, uh, foundations and contemplative care uh, through the New York Zen Center, and and in in the process of doing that, um, I've been studying and practicing the precepts in a deeper way, and understanding how how rich and how powerful this practice is to. Um, to shine a light through and dissolve the sense of separation that we hold and, and uh, from which we create a self, uh, construct a self. Um, this, uh, the essence of the, the practice of morality in Buddhism is uh, non-harming. So not to, not to, well, we went through them in the beginning of the practice, not to kill, not to steal, not to misuse our sexuality in ways that harm others, not to um, misuse our speech and not to intoxicate the mind um, in ways that, you know, so, which cause heedlessness. So, um, and there are, for all of these, there are also positive iterations. So in, in refraining from killing, it leads us to, first of all, a deep exploration of how do I deny life? How do I, how do I reject certain expressions of life? Maybe that I don't prefer or that are not as comfortable for me? And, and how can I support life? How am, I, how am I not 
supporting life within myself and others and 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 this this whole self other construct construct um, can be seen in just contemplating that deeply that that first precept is so profound like is this life is this sense of self is this you know, how is this delusive i mean with every breath i can recognize that i'm not separate with every sip of water with every with every exchange with another being which touches my heart and changes how i arrive in the world i mean we we will emerge from this hour or hour and 20 minutes that we spend together changed you know i certainly will and and all of us will because we've shared this this space time this sacred space time together and done something meaningful supported by one another so so it's um we are, as Thich Nhat Hanh says, you know, we inter are. <laughs> we, this being is an interbeing that uh, that we co arise with one another. And and how can we? So the precepts ask us: How can we bring what is wholesome? for ourselves and for others? How can we support the life of ourselves and others uh, into, this, into this weave, into this field um, that uh, we share? So, um, yes, and, and so, so it's an exploration of, of bringing that which is wholesome and supportive of life into body, speech, and mind, and, and letting go, uh, recognizing how when I think that, well, if I just take this, or if I just say this, you know, lie, uh, because it serves my, you know, serves something that I think is, you know, beneficial for me, um, my comfort, my uh, whatever, um, whatever I'm, I'm holding on to as a self-construct, uh, then that really doesn't matter. That's just, you know, I can just say, well, I'm going to, it doesn't count. So, so it all counts. It's all, like there's nothing left out. That's for me, that's for me, the, the, the deep truth of the practice of morality, that there's nothing left out. It's all woven together. Now, that's not to say that practice of ethics is, is just a lot of rules and, and that we always have to say everything that we understand to be true, even if it's going to be painful to somebody. So there's always discernment. There's always, so that's why it's so important to cultivate wisdom and compassion along with this practice. And so it's, um, yeah, so, so I'm, I'd like to spend the next few months just uh, exploring these practices and, and reflecting together with you in the Sangha on, on the precepts um, and the teachings 
not only from the early Buddhist teachings, but uh, from the other lineages, Buddhism as well. And, um, and, and, and that it would be a time for us to share and encourage our, each other in these practices. Um, so I'll just end the recording now.